So we're going to start with Sirach chapter 7 and verse 25. Sirach chapter 7 and verse 25. Because proving, taking that step towards proving a, a brother or a sister for marriage is a, a very, very, very weighty matter. It's a, it's a, it's a heavy thing. It's not, it's not something that you need to take lightly. The book it's of Sirach. something that you're going to take lightly. Go ahead, read. The book of Sirach, chapter 7, verse 25. Marry thy daughter, and so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter, but give her to a man of understanding. So the scriptures say this, of course, in the, in the older, in the old times, ancient times, the fathers gave their daughters away in marriage. But he said, marry your daughter, it says a, it's a weighty matter. Meaning when you get, when you're thinking about getting married, it's a very serious matter. It's not something that you take lightly. It's not something that you take as it's just, it's going to be a walk in the park because marriage can be difficult at times. As the scriptures tell us in, in 1 Corinthians that there's going to be trouble in the flesh. There's going to be trouble in the flesh when you are married. So marriage is a very serious ordeal. All right, so marriage is a weighty matter. So one of the things you got to keep in mind, marriage being something that's heavy, it's, 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 it's doable, it's possible. It's not something, I'm not saying that it's heavy and weighty to scare you away from marriage, but it's things that you got to make sure is right with you before you even think or consider proving a sister or proving a brother. Because when you're when you proving a sister for, a brother or a sister for marriage and you do get married, it's no longer just you. You no longer are, just, you're, not, you're no longer just examining yourself and getting yourself right. Now you're examining, you're still examining yourself, making sure you're moving in the spirit and you also got to guide your house to make sure your house is moving in the spirit. Guide your wife to make sure she's moving in the spirit. You're not, it's not, you're not just, your worries are not just you and what you got to do. Now you got to make sure you got clothes on your back. You got to make sure your wife got clothes on her back. You got to make sure that your children got clothes on their back. You got to get your, you got to continue getting yourself together because when you get married, yeah, it's a proven process. You may prove one or two years you get to know this person. But once that person come under the same roof with you, there's going to be things that you find out that you might not have found out in the proven process. So now you've got to continue working. It's going to be a continual work. So going into, going into getting married, proven, you've got to make sure your own mind is right. It's a weighty matter because it, it ain't time. It ain't prove. It ain't you, you, you in the truth for it because the counsel is that you wait at least a year before you even think about proving a sister or a brother. And the reason, the reason for that counsel is you taking that year to get your man right. Get your bad idea of what it means to be a man out your mind. Get your bad idea of what it means to be a woman out your mind. Get the independent woman out your mind. Get the, uh, the dependent man, meaning you're dependent on your, your mama. You're dependent on everybody else to take care of you. You have to get those things out of your spirit before you even think about proving a brother or a sister. Otherwise, you're going to end up you, you'll end up destroying somebody's life, including your own. So going into the process of proving is not to be taken lightly. It's something that you got to really, really examine yourself and make sure you're actually ready to go, go to the next step. Uh, read on. Verse 26. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, but give not thyself over to a light woman. Because when you go into when you go in, when you in the proving process, you're proving the sister to see if she understand she understand the role of a wife. You are making sure that you also under she's checking you the the brother is checking to see if the sister ro understand the role the, her role as a wife. Brothers, you 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 check and she's checking you to see if you understand your role as a man. Are you gonna be able to provide? You gotta know how to know how not to be a lion in your house. Everything ain't rah, rah, rah when you're dealing with your household. You got you to be able to show mercy. You got to be able to be long-suffering. You got to show temperance, patience. Because when you're, teaching, when you're teaching your household, you're teaching your wife, she might not, understand, she might not always understand what you bring out right when you bring it out. She's not going she to have the same level of understanding as you have. It's your responsibility and your job as a husband to teach her, to build her spirit up. It's not to get frustrated and, be, and, and go off and, oh, you wicked. No. 
some things when you you gotta you have to learn you're gonna have to learn how to be able to break the scriptures down in a way that she can understand it. And that's not that's not gonna be that's not always easy. But in the proving process, when you're proving, you're doing that. Because when you're proving, you're gonna be going, you, you should be going over some scriptures. It shouldn't just be a, a talk, 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 just talking about random stuff, talking about stuff that have no value and no weight. Y'all should be talking about the scriptures. Y'all should be talking about your, your roles as, hus- as the, role, the roles of a husband, the roles of a wife. Because y'all have to really fully, you should, before you even start proving, you should understand marriage. Because if you start proving and you don't understand marriage, then you're on a train that's going to derail. You're on a train that's going to derail. Because marriage is a very serious thing. You have to have a good understanding of marriage so that when you're in a proving process, you know the things that you're looking for, you think you know, you know what you're looking for and what you're not looking for. You know what things to that you can overlook, and what things what thing when I say things to be overlooked, you know how not to be petty. Be petty over small things that really don't matter to building up the marriage. Um, read that read that twenty verse twenty six again. Verse twenty six: Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not. But give not thyself over to a light woman. So it says, have, a, have thou a wife after thy mind. That, so going, when you prove, going into a proving process, y'all proving each other to, to make sure that you understand and the other person understand that if, if the proving process turns out good and y'all actually get married, y'all both have to understand that y'all are joint heirs of the kingdom. Joint heirs of the kingdom, meaning that, yeah, y'all married, but it's still a requirement on each one of you individually to make sure that you are keeping the commandments. You, you are being a good example to your wife. You being a good example to the husband that both of y'all still get the kingdom. Go to uh, Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 12. Because the thing, when you come into a marriage, it's every, each, each, each party has a role to play. It's not 50-50. Is each one of you coming coming to the table full, not broken, not 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 expecting to come into a marriage thinking that your your wife gonna fix you or your 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 husband gonna fix you or feel the cracks in your life? That's not the right mindset. You got to make sure that you are fully right before you even start the proving process. Read what you got. The Book of Ezekiel, chapter fourteen, verse twelve. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, "Son of man." When the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it and will break the staff of the bread thereof and will send famine upon it and will cut off man and beast from it. So the Most High saying when, when, when a nation break his rule, when, when the land break his rule and he bring forth judgment on the land, read. Verse 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, we're in it, so though we are in this, we are in this land, and we see destruction coming, and we know we got to keep the commandments. And this is each individual. It's naming Noah, Daniel, and Job, but this also applies to the sister. Read. They should deliver, but their own souls by their righteousness, said the Lord God. So it says they should deliver, but their own souls by their righteousness. So that means no matter whether you married or single. You got to be keeping God's commandments. We know that righteousness is keeping the commandments according to Deuteronomy 6 and 25. So when you're going, before you even go into the proven process, your mindset should be on God's laws. Your mindset should be keeping God's laws. You should fully understand marriage. A husband knowing, knowing, knowing the role of a man going into a proven process, you should already know as a man, it's your responsibility to provide for the household. It's your response. You are the, you're going to be the head of the house. So it's your responsibility to provide, to be the sole provider, physically, mentally, and spiritually. You got to be able to go in the scriptures, answer questions. If you're, if you're, if you're real, if some, if an issue arises, you got to be able to go into the scriptures and resolve the issue. It's your responsibility. Not saying that the sister is not going. It's not going to be times where the wife. It may be times where the sister be in the spirit and the, and the husband out the spirit, and she got to bring things back, back to a, a, a sense. Where she, where she reminds you of the scriptures. She reminds you, you got to be, if both parties are believing, when the word, when the scriptures come out, 
it should be, and you know you're in the wrong, it should be, a, you know what, I was, I was out the spirit, I was wrong. You know what, let me correct that, let me, let me move forward. That's what your mind gotta be going into a marriage before you even start the proven process. If that's not your mindset, if you got the mindset, if a sister got the mindset, oh, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this guy, I'm gonna run this, I'm gonna run this Negro when we get married, he's gonna do what I want when I want it. No, nah, you not you you haven't you not you haven't healed from the world yet. You gotta get your mind right. Brothers, if you got that spirit, oh she gonna bow down to me. This my slave, she's my possession, she my slave. No, nah, that's not the right mindset. Because you are joint heirs with Christ. So your mindset, you have to understand your role as a husband is to nurture your wife, build up in the spirit. Do the laws. Go to from there. Go to First Timothy four and twelve. First Timothy four and twelve. Because now you got going into the going into a marriage. It should be two individuals. Not saying that you're not gonna have issues. Not saying that you're gonna be one hundred percent perfect. But your mindset should be on keeping the commandments. Your mindset should be. You know what? My my duty. In this life is to keep the commandments. That's how I'm going to get the kingdom. And now I'm taking on a wife. I'm taking on a husband. Now I got to make sure that I'm falling in line with the laws. Of course, the, the laws, keeping the, keeping the laws myself, and also what, what's required of me towards my husband, towards my wife. That's, the, that's what the mindset has to be going into the proven process. It has to already be set on an understanding of what marriage is about. Read that. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So going into, going into a marriage, you got to understand. Sisters got to understand. Brothers got to understand that even in, even in that marriage, yeah, y'all marry, you become one flesh, yes. But you still got to be an example in that household. When things go wrong, things go, when troubles arise, is a disagreement arise, what y'all gonna do to stay in the spirit? You have to be an example. You gotta be an example of, of, of admitting your faults and pushing forward. It says be an example of the believers in word and faith and charity. So you be an example of the believers. This is, one, read that in uh, Sirach chapter nine and one. Look at Sirach chapter nine, verse one. Be not jealous over the wife of thy bosom, and teach her not an evil lesson against thyself. So this, and we know that the, the Bible is written in masculine form, and this is specifically talking about the husband, but the wife could do the same thing. The wife could teach the husband an evil lesson. But it says, teach her not an evil lesson against thyself. What does that mean? Mean that you, you always think you're right. You don't think you never could fall. You think you not think, you think, you, th you, you don't think you could do no wrong. You never apply the scriptures when, they, when it comes to your wife. You never listen to what your wife got to say. Not saying you, 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 listen to her, you listen to her every emotion and you let her steer you and move you around, but when, that, when, when she has an evident need and you just ignore it. She try to express things. She expresses things to you that's, that's um, that, that, that she likes, that she, that the things that please her, and you just neglect it. Act like just, just let it go over your head, act like you didn't hear it. You're not doing the things that would please your wife. It's all work, work, work. You're doing everything, you're doing everything but tending to your wife. That's how you would teach a evil, you teach your wife an evil lesson. Because what we have to understand is as the husband, we are. We are the Christ in our household. As we we gonna read later, we gonna go read that too. In Ephesians five, the household, a husband and wife, is compared to Christ and the church. So if you just neglecting your rib, she walking around bummy, but you 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 walking around good. You got the newest clothes, you got everything new, but she walking around bummy. She's just bogus. Everything you you just not tending to none of her needs. You're not even you're not going over the scriptures with her. You're not just you just completely ignoring every, her every need. You teaching your wife an evil lesson, and you actually could be teaching her such, such an evil lesson that you push her out this truth. 
that's not how we, that's not, if you're, like, you have to understand marriage before you even go into it. Your mind should be set on understanding what marriage is about before you even think to say, hey, I'm ready to prove. You got to be grounded yourself. Um, go to Sirach 36. Sirach 36 and 24. The book of Sirach, chapter 36, verse 24. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. So it says, he that, beginneth, begin, he that getteth a wife beginneth a possession. Pull up that definition for possession. Pull up that definition for possession. Because what you have to understand, this is not talking about um, the, the, when they say your possession, this is not a, uh, oh, this is, you're, you man, I could misuse you, abuse you, and do whatever I, whatever I wish. You have to be in line with God's laws. Pull up that definition of possession. You got to understand that you are, you will be the head. It's your response, it's now your responsibility to lead her in righteousness. All right, can you, you see that? Just what's uh, what I got uh, the little square around. Po definition of possession. The act or state of possessing or holding an owner or occupant. The state of owning or being master of anything. The state of being seized of anything. Occupancy, ownership, rightful or wrongful. So the part of the definition I'm going to focus on, this is the state of owning or being master of anything. Pull up the definition of master. Master. It's a noun. First definition. A man who rules, governs, or directs either men or business. A man who owns slaves is their master. He who has servants is their master. Yeah. He who has apprentices is their master. He who has apprentices apprentices in their master is their master as he has the government and direction of them. The man who superintends and directs any business is master or master workman. So one of the, in that definition of possession, it said that uh one who let me pull it up real quick. You ain't got to leave it. Leave it on master. In the definition of possession, it said the the state of owning or being master of anything. So when you begin, when you be, be, beginneth, he that beginneth, the, he, he that getteth the wife beginneth the possession. Now you become master of that household. So you master that household. It says a man who rules, governs, or directs either men or business. Uh, what's that other one? He who has apprentices is their master as he has the government and direction of them. It says the man who superintends or directs any business is master or master workman. I mean, you're responsible. Now you're responsible for the way that your household goes. You're responsible for the direction that the, the woman goes. She gets out the spirit, you got to be able to direct her back into the laws. You got to be able to direct, if there's issue and tension in your house, you got to be, you have to be the one to actually bring that, bring the house back into peace. Even if it's your fault, you got to be able to bring the house back in order so that both of y'all are in line with what the scriptures say. Uh, read two. Master, second definition. A director, head, or chief manager, as the master of a feast. So now it says a director, a head, a head. So this is why I want the, so possession, we read the definition of master. Now it says, in the def, under the definition of master, it says a director, head, or chief manager as the master of the feast. Get Ephesians chapter 5 and 22. So as you, you go, going into the proven process, you should already understand that you proving, yes, you proving, and, and and going through the process before marriage, you should already understand what it means to be the head of the house. You should already understand what it means to be the husband. 
the sister should already understand what it means to be a wife. It's not start the proving process, now learn how to be a husband, now learn how to be a wife. You should already understand that. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.